Hi everyone, complete React roadmap. This video is going to cover basically a bunch of topics that I think is a good exhaustive list of topics to know if you're trying to get into React. We'll be covering them in order. And the goal is by the end of it, you understand the topics to learn when you're trying to do React development. Unfortunately, today React isn't enough to write front-end projects. Before this video, I was trying to go through a few open source projects, trying to find one that's written in React. Couldn't really find a good company that's using React today. Most of them have basically moved to Next. But the good thing is React is a prerequisite for Next.js. So this video basically consider it as a decent beginner roadmap to create front-ends the way they were being created up until two years ago. Now, as I said, React is being used, uh, sorry, Next is being used for writing websites and React Native is the thing that you need to learn if you want to write mobile apps. But a great overview of how things were done up until two years ago. Let's get right into it. Let's begin with the first point, understanding the DOM and making dynamic websites. At this point, you need to understand what are dynamic websites, how are they different from static websites and how up until React was introduced, um, it was very hard to write dynamic websites. Um, in fact, there were a few frameworks that I used to use in college. If you've heard of them, I don't know. There's one called jQuery that was fairly famous. There's another one called Backbone.js that was the standard way to write. Not the standard way, but like the only popular way that made it slightly easy to write dynamic websites, which was used for the longest time. But then frameworks like React or Vue came into the picture and knocked these out of the park. And React became the more popular way to write websites because it's more developer friendly compared to these frameworks like jQuery. So try to write a basic dynamic website without using React. Preferably, you don't even need to use jQuery or, or Backbone. Just write it in the completely raw way. Try to manipulate the DOM and understand what exactly DOM is. The reason this is good is because you get an intuition as to what are the challenges or problems that React fixes, why it got adopted so quickly, because you know it made front-end development very easy. The reason it made it very easy was because it's very hard to do dynamic websites because of the way the web is written. All right, that's number one. Number two, understanding reconciliation and how React actually works under the hood. You have to realize K React is nothing but a lot of JavaScript code that makes it easy for you to write websites the way they were written until React was introduced. A good analogy here is okay, you today can use ChatGPT to write some React code and under the hood, React is just another way to write the raw HTML, CSS, JavaScript code that we've been writing for years, the one that I'm writing you to write in point one. So the way ChatGPT is an easy way to write, React is an easy way to write HTML, CSS and JavaScript the raw way, write HTML, CSS, JavaScript the raw way first, then once you're good at it, feel free to use React to write it in a different way. Once you're good at React, then feel free to use an AI and make the AI write React code for you. This is the general good trajectory to follow. If you directly go to an AI and ask it to write code without learning the th thing underneath, it will basically become a problem very quickly. So keep this in mind and understand what is the reconciliation, this concept that sort of makes React performant and also like makes it do the things that it does. All right. Number three, React as a wrapper. Bring some basic boilerplate React code locally to your machine. Look at it, try to change it a little bit. Maybe create a simple to-do application or a calculator application and try to build the application. When you build the application, try to look at the final output that you get. And you'll realize that this final output is just a bunch of HTML, CSS and JavaScript files. Only you haven't written a lot of dynamic JavaScript code that you used to write. React wrote it for you. And that's what the benefit of React is. So try to write a few applications, build them and see the final output. Make sure you understand that in the end, React is nothing but it's writing my HTML, CSS and JavaScript code for me, more specifically just your JavaScript code. This will also give you a decent idea of how to create a basic application in React from which you start to learn some technologies before you build some bigger projects. But a basic calculator app is something that you can build by this point. All right. Number four, components, state, rendering and props. Four jargon you need to know of very front-end framework specific, so not just React, Vue also has the concept of components and state. State and components are one, a very jargon to understand. Two, if you understand how they're related to each other and why this distinction was made between components in state is when you'll understand the power of React and you know why it was written the way it was written. So make sure you understand these four jargons, state, components, rendering, and props. At this point, you can create a very basic application, probably create the to-do application after you understand these four things you, yeah, you probably need to know these four things before you can proceed. All right. At this point, good checkpoint, create a to-do application and move on to understanding this thing called hooks. Hooks weren't a concept in React for the longest time. Front-end frameworks 
coding changes very quickly. So React used to be written a certain way until 20, I don't know, 18, 19, I don't even remember. And then came the concept of functional components, which is the popular way to write React components today. If you're dealing with functional components is when you sort of have to deal with something called lifecycle events. And to tap into these lifecycle events or to get access to something called side effects, you need something called hooks. There are a few very popular hooks. Some of you might have heard of use state, use effect, use memo, use callback, use ref. These are the basic ones that you need to know of. Understand a few use cases in these, why they are used, why they are popular and what extra benefit that they provide. You cannot create an application without use state or use effect. You can create applications without use callback and use memo, but they give you some performance benefits. So it's good to know all five of these is when you can proceed to writing your own hooks. So point number six is create your own set of custom hooks. Join a bunch of these hooks that I told you in the last point and try to create some hooks of your own. Uh, they could solve a specific use case, for example, a hook to get all the to do's for your to do application or even better, maybe a hook that hits your backend every 10 seconds and gets you the latest data on the backend. This will give you an idea of how you can separate state computation and the final component rendering very well. These things might make more sense after you, you know, start to learn this and, and reach 0.7 or 0.6. These things might make a little more sense after you start to learn these things. These terms might make a little more sense after you start to learn React and reach the stage. But at a high level, you need to know how to write your own components and you need to know how to write your own hooks. With that, seventh point, prop drilling context API and the suspense API. Um, basically, again, as time goes by and I add more points here, a lot of these are not needed, but they're standard. Everyone uses them and there are good reasons why they were introduced. But you can create any React application by everything you know up until this point. Should you? No, you should use all of these things that I'm going to talk about from here. Prop drilling is sort of an anti-pattern slash a problem in React. It's a pretty popular interview question as well. It's basically you passing down state component via component and you can get rid of it by doing state management, which is going to be the next point. Or you can use the raw context API that React provides you. If you use the context API, then you're only inside the React ecosystem. But if you move on to the next point, which is state management, then you're also trying to get rid of this thing called a uh, prop drilling. Even more, you're making your app more and more performant, but you are adding an external library to your code base. That library could be Redux, if you've heard of it, Recoil, Zustand, there are a bunch of other popular state management frameworks. All of these, the goal is the same. Okay, number one, as your application grows, you want to manage your state the thing that I talked about in point number four, you want to manage your state a little bit better and you want to prevent a lot of re-renders in your application, making it more performant. For that, you need an external library. React does not provide you this out of the box. React does provide you the context API, but the context API is not enough to make your application more performant. It is enough to get rid of proper drilling in your application though, all right? Point number eight, state management tools. Point number nine, routing. If you're creating a more dynamic application, your application is going to have a bunch of pages. For example, Facebook has your feed page and then a messages page and then your friends feed, so on and so forth. All of these usually have different URLs in the URL bar and React is what's called a single page application. So it needs to support, you know, handling routes and, you know, changing the current view based on the current route that you're on. For that, there are a few standard popular libraries. Again, feel free to pick anyone and understand how you can create a basic real application which has multiple pages, not just one. If you've only created a to-do application or a calculator application, you probably did not have too many pages. But as you create a real application, you will you know, have 100 pages sometimes. So routing is sort of important. And if you open big code bases, you will see all the routing is done in like a single separate file. Number 10, styling. At this point, you can create a bunch of ugly websites. You probably don't want to create them in production. If you're creating a real website, you need to style it very well. You can use raw CSS in React. No one's preventing you from it. But usually there are standard CSS libraries for doing styling across your application. They're all opinionated in, your, in their own ways. Uh, there's one called Tailwind, Material UI. Uh, and if you want to get into the big players today, this one called Tradix UI and Shad CN. I have a detailed video on what you should choose in case you're thinking of creating a production worthy application. TLDR is Tailwind is probably the right choice. Feel free to go through that video, but you need to spend a decent chunk of your time here getting comfortable with at least one styling library. Number 11, this one's sort of optional, but again, good to know. Understanding the tooling behind bootstrapping a React application, how it is built, what is Webpack, what is Babel, what is Create React app, why it's not great, and then what is V how it came into the picture to replace create react app all of these are tooling these are things you do once for your application or if you're you know making a very big change in your application introducing something very weird for example if you're creating a chrome extension then you have to worry about these things usually you just 
bootstrap your application and, and are good to go but these are good to know and usually asked a lot during interviews number 12 performance improvements or some common libraries that you will see being used across a lot of code bases because they give you some extra performance benefits which are easy to miss if you're you know writing react code for the first time the first set of libraries where you will see this is forms so if you're creating a form in react it's very easy to write it in an extremely unperformant way to fix that a lot of smart people have written libraries the two popular ones are react hook forms and formic high level what happens is if you do form management yourself anytime you're changing a form input field you do a re-render and the golden rule of thumb in react is you have to minimize the number of re-renders so to prevent that you can either write some really ugly code like you used to before react was introduced basically do dom manipulation or dom access yourself or you can use these libraries like um, react hook forms that pretty much under the hood do the same thing and you give you a lot of performance out of the box you don't have to worry about this performance at all if i'm being honest you won't notice it on the website you will notice it in a mobile app though so if you're going to eventually use a react native it's good to get comfortable with these libraries all mobile projects most mobile projects will use some library like this to make forms more performant else your application you know will be really slow all right the other set of libraries you'll see is libraries for fetching data from the backend um, these libraries give you a lot of hooks which is something we talked about a few points ago that make it slightly easy for you to fetch data from the backend popular ones are swr and react query lastly testing this one's optional uh, if i'm being honest I, I don't see too much point in front-end tests i could totally be wrong and this could be a controversial take and this could cancel me but i've seen most open source projects good projects otherwise it's very hard for you to you know maintain a lot of coverage in front end tests is it a good thing to know probably I, I don't think there's any downside to learning how to write tests on a front end code base that said i've mostly seen people being finicky slash you know very strict when it comes to back end tests but people are okay if you check in a component without writing the test for it so feel free to pick and choose whether or not you want to do this point Lastly, that's a high level of the React roadmap. I think if you know all of this, you know 80, 85% of what React has to offer. But as I said, React is no longer the popular choice when it comes to writing websites. Next.js is slowly becoming that. A lot of the React team has moved over to Vercel, who's the parent company of Next. And there are good reasons for it. Um, so at this point, you can either write React websites on your own. But if you want to dive into open source projects, especially the new ones, like not GSOC projects, but like good companies, um, you will notice all the code bases are in Next, which is frankly not too hard to pick from this point. But it has its own set of you know, nuances that are good to know. But a lot of it is just React code and writing components. So not too hard to learn. But at this point, you have to choose whether or not you want to stay in React. Uh, which is also good but preferably probably learn next.js and if you want to write mobile apps then learn um, react native it's very easy to learn react native if you know react um, that said mobile is hard uh, so you will face a bunch of challenges when you make this transition it's also good to know a little bit you know how android development and ios development actually works under the hood and how react native is just you know a wrapper on top of native there's something called expo that makes it slightly easy for you to write react native code initially at least and probably maybe even forever so look into that in case you're thinking of writing mobile apps and and don't write them in raw react native at least initially that's high level of the react roadmap i think i've covered everything maybe a little bit more of what's being covered in the code as well so feel free to learn it from any resource i think i've covered all the top if you like such videos let me know if there is a specific niche in which you want me to make such a video let me know that as well i'm happy to do that with that let's end it i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye